My name is Rachel Wahba. <laughs> okay. How old are you? What year were you born? I was born March 19th, 1946. I am going to be 64 okay. in March. What city and country were you born in? I was in? born in Bombay, India. And what's, uh, uh, do you have brothers and sisters? One brother, he was also born in Bombay. He was um, uh, born four years after me. Okay. Um, can you tell me your father's name and where he was born? Mm -hmm. My father's name was Maurice Eli Wahba. He was born in Mansoura, Egypt. Mm -hmm. okay. And my mom? My mother um, was born in Baghdad. Her name was Khatun Katie Sharbani. Uh, how old was your mother and your father when they got married? How did they meet each other? Um, my mother was 20 and my father was not 29 and they met in Bombay and they happened to be there at the same time. My father actually had left Egypt in 39 and um, he left Egypt when he saw the popularity of Hitler's Mein Kampf and how it was translated into Arabic all over Cairo and he said this is it. It's time, time to get out. It's over for the Jews here. He had a brother who was already in Japan. I know this is kind of going around, but um, he had a brother who was already in Japan. And so he left Egypt in 39 to go to Japan. And he also worked in Shanghai. Um, but during, he knew that he knew Japan was going to war. And so when he was in Shanghai, he bought passage on the last ship out of Shanghai, um, another Jew who said, nah, there's not going to be a war, mm -hmm. and uh, another actually Iraqi. And he ended up in India during the war. My mother was in India um, because after the Farhud, which was the massacre of Jews in 41 in Baghdad, her family, well, there were m multiple reasons. My, her father was already gone. Did your father experience any sort of anti-Semitism or violence himself when he was in Egypt? Or was it just him, his observations that... Well, you know, when he was growing up in Egypt, um, it was under King Farouk. And they always knew that they couldn't make too much noise. Okay, my father's life in Egypt was very different from my mother's life in Baghdad. My mother was terrified the whole time. Um, my father uh, experienced anti-Semitism mostly in school. Now, why was he in a Catholic school? Because in Mansoura, there was a Muslim school or the Catholic school. And the Muslim school would be intolerable. So the Jewish kids, for the most part, went to the Catholic school in Mansoor. Um, he did not grow up scared. He was a member of the Zionist organization. Which um, one? Do you know the name? He youth Zionist. I have a, I can do a show and tell, but I have a little card. It's not here. Have to. Um, he actually wanted to go to Palestine, but the British, it was a time that you couldn't. Um, so he, you know, the anti-Semitism he experienced was very, very strong from the Catholics, from the brothers. I mean, he remembers a story where he's in recess, he's talking to one of the boys and he goes, oh yeah, so, because they were talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And my father's saying, what the hell is a Holy Ghost? There's no such thing as a Holy Ghost. And he, he was like, he must have been like 14 or something. And he was teasing this other boy. And um, he says, so in the wild frere, the brother told us so, you know, the teacher told us. And so my, my father said, yeah, so if they tell you donkeys can fly, you're going to believe that too? Well, when he came back from recess, this brother, the, the monk, they very pointedly said, we're here to convert you. And if you don't like it, get out. And that was... And so my father then initiated this thing where they collected money and gave this brother a present. But it was that kind of a thing. And he, but it's not like you could pick a fight with a Muslim kid and win. You pretty much stayed away. Yeah. Did your father grow up in an insulated Jewish community? Um, 
No, I, no and yes. I mean, there were other foreigners. Even though my father was hardly a foreigner, his family were in Egypt thousands of years. I mean, they, the Wahba side were peasants in Mustawi before Mansura. You know, Mustawi, the, 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 there's a picture actually in the Jews of Egypt where the Wahba is mentioned. So they were very... Um, they were peasants, they were there forever. My father's mother's side um, did the whole route. So in other words, Spain, Turkey, Syria, uh, Morocco, Palestine, Egypt, all in there. So growing up, what language did your father speak at home? They spoke um, Arabic and French. Did they speak Ladino? No, Ladino. Mm. But um, in the mother's side, maybe, but mostly French. Yeah. They all spoke French, as a matter of fact. The relatives that were kicked out in um, in '56 um, from Egypt, half of them went to Paris, and that was mostly his mother's side, and the other half his father's side, because they never accepted any other citizenship, even when it was offered to them. Let's say by France, or they could have bought a Spanish passport, or they could have bought a Turkish passport. The Wahba side said, "No way, we're Egyptian," so they ended up being stateless. And then they went to Israel, and most of them were settled in Ashdod. Mm -hmm. But we were out already. I mean, you know, because Dad left Egypt in '39 and never went back. My father had one brother already in Japan, his elder brother Jack. Um, and and Jack was just a wanderer and an adventurer. And so that's why in '39, when Jack said, "Come on, come on, Musa," you know, because his name was Maurice, but it was Musa also. And he said, come on, Musa, get out of there. And my father, like I said, after he saw Mein Kampf being translated in World War II, he said, forget it, it's over. But, you know, he grew up with stories of, like, his great-grandfather, um, you know, looking in a, a butcher shop, and who knows if this is real or true or not, but and seeing, you know, a Christian body hanging and a Jewish body hanging, or, you know, you know we're, we're going to, you know, eat the Christians for lunch and the Jews for dinner. And there was always that fear. Yeah. You know, there was always that demi status, a second class. So even if you had a King Farouk who was friends with the Jews and friendly and you, it was a good time, you, the, the people always knew that it could be bad on a dime. And then it was. And your grandparents and your great-grandparents on your father's side, when did they leave? My that they never left. I mean, the people that left were his aunts. His mother was already dead. His aunts and um, his father. You know, this, this, this is his father's, where is it? Because they were stateless, once Egypt decided to kick them out, they had to have a laissez-passe. So this was what he was left with, and a promise never to return. But um, w when he had this passport, I'm in it. And he was always so proud. He goes, see, you know, this. you're in my passport. You're an Egyptian like me. Egypt stopped issuing any passports to Jews. And this is now, we're talking what? We're talking 1949. Um, and before dad left, he and the Egyptian consulate were, were friends. You know, they were both Egyptians, you know, in India. The guy came to his an uh, anniversary, I'm um, not anniversary, sorry, engagement party. But by the time the wedding, he had he sent somebody in his stead. So you could see that it was souring now between the Jews and, and, and Egypt because of Israel. And my father, he would tell my father, what are you caring about these refugees from Europe? They're not Egyptians. And my father says, they're Jews. What do you care? You're an Egyptian. All right. So one day he's an Egyptian. The next day, you know what, Musa? Even though your family lived in Egypt longer than my family, because, you know, a lot of Egyptians came from Syria, wherever, right? They didn't have the lineage and the longevity that the Wafas had. But you're a Jew. Pretty soon, even you aren't going to be an Egyptian. But dad left, promised by the consulate that he would give my mother papers to get her and me to Japan. It took one year. 
And why did it take one year? Because she, by the fact that she was an Iraqi and left, is already stateless. She's a woman. And so whatever she, her husband is, she is. So India says, you have a husband. I'm sorry, we can't give you a passport. They gave a passport to my grandfather. My, my granny didn't need it. She was British, very proud of being British. Um, you know, my uncle, they all got Indian passports. But because mom was a married woman, they weren't going to touch her. So they weren't going to give her an Indian passport. Okay, so no Indian passport, no Iraqi passport, and no Egyptian passport. She goes to the Egyptian consulate, and he goes, you're Iraqi, go to the Iraqi consulate. She goes to the Iraqi, you're married to an Egyptian, go to the Egyptian consulate. The Indians, you know, nothing we can do. She goes to the Red Cross, you're not a refugee. We can't help you. One year. And now she's pregnant with my brother. And she's just a mess. And that one year was going back and forth till finally, and I don't know what strings were pulled. I don't know who, you know, got some mercy in their heart. I don't know how it happened, but she finally got Red Cross papers. And we went to Japan in 1950. When you were born, your only identity was the, the picture of you and your father's Egyptian passport. Yeah. I and was Egyptian. No, yeah. Yeah. And then I became stateless mm -hmm. because once he was in Japan, there was no more reissuing, reissuing the passport, mm -hmm. which then became a problem the years we lived in Japan. And by the way, before my father left India in 49, in 1948, he and my mother, and that's two years after I was born, in 1948, he and my mother applied for American citizenship. They didn't get it till 1968. So while we're in Japan now, we're stateless. So what did you do? What was your life like there? Well, number one, the Japanese didn't like it that we were stateless. So they would come around and say, when are you leaving? And my father would say, go ask Nasser. Give us, give us a passport. We'll leave. We'll be happy to leave. And they, they didn't understand. You're born in a country. That's your country. Where's your passport? So it was almost impossible to explain it. And there was harassment. 